Uh, thank you, Professor Chunren. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, today, I would like to uh, concentrate more on the industrial, uh, industrial policy of Vietnam. Uh, so, because I think it is the main part of our scoping paper for Vietnam, and uh, maybe I can withdraw some lessons uh, from Vietnam, uh, lessons that can be learned uh, from Vietnam for the other country, uh, such as uh, those uh, come from Africa. Uh, I will present um, two or uh, four, uh, four issues. For the content consists of the four parts. The first one is I would like to uh, go to uh, brief quickly about the Vietnam growth better, and then I go to the main part of, the, uh, of my presentation. It is about the industrial policy, and then uh, I will uh, show some uh, uh, major outcome of our uh, industrial policy, uh, with the problems, and uh, finally, I would like to withdraw some lessons learned from Vietnam. Now, quickly to the uh, growth pattern of Vietnam in the uh, past. As you can see, the uh, GDP growth rate average uh, more than 7% uh, in the past 20 years. Um, unfortunately, uh, Vietnam could not keep the high growth rate uh, after uh, its uh, uh, WTO accession in 2007. As uh, you can see, that uh, growth uh, in Vietnam here tends to decline uh, after Vietnam's WTO accession from 2008. Uh, what about the growth rate of the different sector? Here you can see that the, uh, we can see here that the growth of the industry and construction uh, experience the highest growth among the different sectors um, from 1992 to, uh, to 2007. Um, after Vietnam joined the WTO, the industry sector uh, growth uh, tends to decline. Um, even though, thanks to the high growth rate, the, the uh, industry sector, industry and construction sector, um, expand, could expand its share in GDP and became the, uh, an important driver of economic, uh, economic growth, GDP growth of, in Vietnam. So you, you can see here from the figure, that's the uh, contribution of uh, industry and construction sector was about uh, nearly 38% uh, in the GDP growth rate, not GDP. So, uh, now I would like to uh, talk more, to present more of the industrial policy in Vietnam. Um, here, the question here are, uh, what are the objectives of the industrial policy in the past? Um, what key instruments have been implemented to achieve these objectives? And what are the major outcomes and uh, what can we realize uh, the major uh, problems or uh, obstacles of the, our industrial policy in the past? Uh, I would like to go uh, the evolution. Um, I would like to, to show the evolution of the industrial policy over time uh, in terms of objective, in terms of key instruments and uh, uh, so. So here in uh, the first period from 1991 to 1995, the objective of the industrial policy in Vietnam was to develop the key uh, sectors, including heavy, heavy industries like cement, uh, like steel, and like mo aut automobile, uh, mainly for domestic uh, consumption. And uh, the, another objective it also was to develop the natural resource-based industries such as oil exploitation and mining industries. Uh, in, in this time, the government also gradually um, developed the foodstuff industries, but mainly for domestic consumption. Uh, besides, it also encouraged gradually the export of manufacturer labor-intensive products. So what is about the objective uh, from the, in the next period from 1996 to 2000? 
the objective is still continue the what uh, the one the one that has been uh, implemented in the first period. However, but uh, with more exported uh, export oriented uh, attempt. So uh, in this sector, uh, in uh, in this period, uh, also the industrial policy also was aiming at expanding the manufacturing and processing labor intensive industries and most uh, mostly for export for example here textile shoes and leather products and uh, also seafood in in this period now and uh, for the next period from 2001 to 2005 uh, the objective of the industrial policy followed the Z1 that had been uh, implemented in the previous period, but more export oriented and with an expansion of the manufacturing sector towards uh, high tech industries such as electronics, while still re uh, maintaining the labor intensive sector. Uh, so I think this, uh, this period. Uh, uh, you know, it is the Vietnam side with uh, the US, uh, USA, the bilateral uh, Vietnam-USA US, uh, trade agreement and uh, the BTA agreement has certain impact on the uh, Vietnam economy and also a certain impact on the industrial development here. Uh, now I would go to the next period, the, the, the key uh, goal of the industrial policy was um, the same that edge in the previous period, but with the priority of boosting the economic structural change toward industrialization and modernization of the country uh, with more export-oriented to take advantage of the WTO accession of Vietnam in 2007. So, one another key instrument of the industrial policy uh, that have been uh, uh, implemented uh, to achieve to achieve the these uh, objectives that I mentioned before. So, in the period from 1991 to 1995. The key instrument in this period were the uh, tariff and non-tariff barriers yeah, uh, to protect the domestic production. Uh, here it is for, for example, for the, um, to protect the heavy industry sector like cement, steel, automobile industries. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, the government also uh, pushed the implementation of the law on foreign investment. Uh, that's was enacted in in uh, in uh, 1988 to attract foreign direct investment, and the government also put forward with the implementation of the company law uh, that is uh, passed in 2000 and uh, in 1992. So. Uh, for the next period from 1996 to 2000, the government, the key instruments. Uh, uh, were uh, di different. For example, here the government uh, implemented the five-year public investment program, uh, mostly to attract the uh, investment for development of physical infrastructure for industry industrial development. <coughs> so, it, in the same time, the government also uh, have done equitization of the state-owned enterprises and uh, built of the state general corporation to enhance the competitiveness of the state sector in Vietnam. Uh, so you know, uh, you know, in Vietnam before uh, for doi mới, for the renovation process in uh, before prior to 1990. So the economy of Vietnam consisted mostly uh, of the state-owned inter-owned sector. So we uh, at Prior 1990, uh, the private sector was quite weak. <coughs> so, um, another key instrument in the period uh, was uh, to develop the industrial zones, ex uh, export processing zones, uh, to provide production size 
um, for the uh, to to attract the investment, including foreign direct investment, private investment, so into the country. Um, in this period, uh, also the the government also the the condition for export activities uh, have been also loosened uh, after Vietnam. Uh, uh, Inter became the ASEAN uh, member in, uh, in 1995, and Vietnam has to uh, implement the APTA uh, commitments within uh, this uh, inter, inter into the ASEAN <coughs> uh, ASEAN uh, countries. Yeah. In the period from 2001 to 2005. Uh, the same key instrument has been have been implemented in this period, but here uh, the the key instrument uh, maybe were um, were di redirected to the trade liberalization. Uh, thus, it's uh, mostly driven by the Vietnam USA trade uh, bilater bilateral trade agreement since 2001. Um, in this uh, period, the state also accelerated the equalization of the state-owned enterprises sector to cope with the WTO assessments. From the 2006 to 2010, the trade is liberalized. Uh, it is uh, mostly driven by the assessment to the WTO and the investment also uh, liberalized, uh, mostly driven by the unified law on investment and law on enterprise. Uh, uh, so here I would like to explain. So in Vietnam before 2005, we uh, have, have had a different law. Uh, first, we have, uh, we have had a law on foreign direct investment. And then we have also another law for domestic investment promotion. And uh, because Vietnam have to, uh, would like to, to uh, have access to WTO, yeah, uh, as a response to this, Vietnam uh, merged the two laws into one law. It is the law on investment. The same also uh, goes for the law on enterprise. Uh, before, we, uh, we have the law on company and private enterprises. And Similarly, we have also the law on state-owned state, state uh, owned enterprises. And after to Vietnam, uh, the, in the preparation process to uh, uh, enter the WTO, uh, Vietnam merged two laws into one law. It is the law on enterprise. Uh, that have been uh, passed in 2005. Uh, another key instrument uh, was the building of state economic groups uh, to enhance the competitiveness of the SOE sector. And also, uh, it's another instrument is to build here high-tech zones, economic zones. It is different from industrial zones and export processing zones. So in Vietnam, we have so different zones. It is economic zones, uh, open economic zones to provide more prioritize incentive to attract investment, including private investment and foreign direct investment. Uh, in this period, uh, so instruments such as tech incentives, investment allowance, have been also given uh, to the technology renovation to develop uh, high tech technologies to promote the technology transfer uh, via foreign investment. Uh, at this period, uh, uh, some laws have been passed, for example, law on techno technology transfer and also law on high, uh, high technology. So what about the current industrial policy now in Vietnam? The current industrial policy in Vietnam is governed uh, and implemented by the a socio 10 year socio economic development strategy to 2011 to 2020 and it is also Im implemented uh, in the context of full implementation of AFTA in to in 2018 uh, so uh, at the same time vietnam have also to um, implement uh, 
uh, its uh, commitments to WTO. Uh, that means there is much smaller room for administration uh, policy intervention. Uh, so um, here I would like to explain something to AFTA. In um, uh, now Vietnam have to uh, to to implement the the AFTA commitment, and until 2018, uh, all the uh, tax uh, import uh, duties yeah <laughs> import duties have been reduced to zero uh, percent in 2018. And the objectives of this, uh, the current policy is to improve the industrial competitiveness toward expanding high-tech industries and high-value-added products. Uh, also, uh, to imp improve the competitiveness of the domestic firm, including SOEs and private ones. Uh, the, another goal of this uh, current uh, industrial policy is also to support export-oriented policy of Vietnam to, but towards product with higher value added. That means we move from the export-oriented uh, what's based on labor intensive. Now we would like to move forward to export-oriented policy, however, but to, towards product with higher value added. So now uh, to the key instrument in this period, uh, are many. So uh, I would like to highlight here some uh, key instruments such as uh, restructuring industrial production toward increasing technology and local content to create the linkages with the regional and global production network. Uh, another key instrument is uh, restructuring the SOE sector, uh, focusing first on the state economic groups uh, that uh, process has been started since 2011. Um, and the government also gives more incentive to build supporting industries uh, and also adjust foreign direct policy to attract uh, uh, foreign investment with more technological content and to develop environment friendly industries. And in this, uh, another key in instruments. Uh, uh, that uh, now are implemented uh, include uh, financial incentive and tech incentives. Uh, however, I would say that uh, all these uh, instruments are still in ongoing process and some uh, instruments here are still not yet approved, uh, still in the formulation process. Now, what are the major outcome of the industrial policy here? Uh, uh, so, uh, I would uh, like to hide, highlight here six points, six outcomes. The first, the industrial policy uh, had uh, pushed the growth of the industrial sector and also uh, put uh, rapid uh, expansion of the man manufacturing sector. It also play an important role in attracting foreign direct investment into the country. It also contribute to export uh, performance. Uh, and uh, industrial policy also contributed to promote the shift of industrial production towards the non-state sector and also to pro uh, contribute to promote the shift in export structure towards the manufacturing good uh, here. I would like to show you some figure about the outcome of the, our industrial uh, policy here. It is the uh, uh, foreign direct investment uh, in the period. Uh, uh, you can see um, today uh, in 2012, Vietnam attracted uh, more than 200 billion US dollar of foreign direct investment. However, uh, uh, you can uh, can see here after uh, Vietnam have said to WTO the w, the amount of foreign direct investment has been uh, chopped uh, dramatically. Uh, here is a figure to show uh, the export and uh, export performance and also import performance uh, perf import here of Vietnam. Uh, however, I would say it is uh, we have seen here it's the uh, 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 deficit in trade balance. <coughs> it is uh, another uh, figure here uh, shows the shift in industrial output structure by ownership. You can see that the state lost its, its share in uh, industrial output while the uh, foreign direct investment and the private sector increased its share in industrial output. Uh, this figure shows the shift in export structure toward processed products. 
uh, the, the share of processed product has been increased, uh, while another unprocessed decline. It is a shift in export structure uh, in this figure. You can see that the um, heavy and mining product uh, uh, somehow is stable, uh, can keep its share stable, and uh, uh, you can see here from 2011, the heavy and mining product here still account for more than 30% of export in Vietnam. Now, what are the major issues that I can... <laughs> okay. Oh, one more, one, one more minute, one minute, yeah. So I would like to highlight here five major <coughs> problems of uh, industrial policy here in Vietnam. Uh, the first one is the industry sector tends to grow, uh, tend to grow with the declining rate since 2008, mostly due to the slowdown of the manufacturing sector. So industrial production depend increasingly on the foreign investment sector. The ship into the industry with higher technological content and product with higher value added has been in stagnation. Uh, export performance depends increasingly on the foreign investment sector and uh, the SOE sector is inefficient. And now, finally, I would like to withdraw three lessons learned from Vietnam for maybe for Vietnam itself and also for other countries. So firstly, it's the industrial policy in Vietnam set very ambitious objectives. Uh, too many, they specify also too many leading key industries, uh, but uh, with unclear vision and insufficient instruments and lack of realizable action plans. The second lesson here is uh, it shows a lack of aware coordinated framework for industrial policy. Here I mean that the industrial, pol industrial policy has been implemented not in line with trade policy and other policies such as investment incentive, monetary, fiscal policy. And finally, uh, one more lesson I would, uh, would like to withdraw from uh, the Vietnam case. It's the industrial policy shows a lack of well coordinated implementation, implementation between central and provincial level that leads to the late adjustment of the objectives and instrument for the industrial policy. Uh, so that in Vietnam here, for example here, here ma many industrial zones have been uh, established uh, but with low coverage rate and also provinces in Vietnam compete with each other for attract foreign direct investment. So here I would like to close my presentation here. Thank you.